Now, I'm a baritone player by profession, and I very proudly present to you the Steve Goodson model baritone. Absolutely the finest baritone anyone has ever manufactured. Designing a new baritone and creating the problems inherent with the baritone sax was a labor of love for me. Now, this, ladies and gentlemen, is the Steve Goodson model baritone sax. There's never been anything like it. There is no finer baritone available on this planet at any price. This example is in a beautiful silver plate. We also have this instrument available in gold plate, black nickel, or gold lacquer. Now, the reason that other baritone saxophones don't perform nearly as well as this is because the other manufacturers have refused to do the math and pay attention to acoustic theory. I'll say that again. Those guys are asleep at the wheel. They're not paying attention. We totally redesigned the upper pigtail of this horn and got the math right. So when you go from the third space C to the fourth line D, it doesn't sound like you picked up an additional instrument. Now, in my career as a repairman, I've had to fix too many baritones, so I made some changes here. I added some nickel silver guards to the top uh, e, F, and a high F sharp, and I made them screw removable for easy maintenance. We also added an additional brace here so the pigtail doesn't get knocked out of line. We're using our premium kangaroo leather pads with a solid brass noix. The front F is fully screw adjustable, which is critical on the baritone. We have on our low A key, feels like a real saxophone key rather than an add-on because we move the geometry over here instead of coming over here, enable us to use a shorter rod and not have any key flex. A three position strap hook, an extra large sax gourmet thumb rest, the chromatic B flat and C have stops at the bottom so they don't flex. Genuine mother of pearl key touches, and here's the important thing you need to know about the key touches. The spacing on the key touches on this baritone is exactly the same as a tenor saxophone. You don't have your hands spread out trying to play the baritone. It's in a very natural, relaxed position, which will give you greater speed and execution. We have double arms on the low C to keep it moving in a horizontal plane, but we don't use a double arm on the low B B flat or A because it's not necessary. You see, we use a double brace on the bell to body here to keep the bell from moving. So these are always nice and stable. These keys are also protected by individual key guards instead of one large guard. An extra large bell, beautiful, beautiful engraving. The engraving on this horn is the best in the world. Every one of them is a little bit different. Uh, this one has a beautiful, beautiful floral motif. Nothing sounds like it. If you would do me the honor, my friend. Okay, one baritone. Now you were probably one of the finest baritone players ever. I well, mean, you concentrate on repairing now, and I don't know why you should be out here blowing this thing. The money's better. <laughs> so, uh, let's see. So straight in the middle, straight and fine. That's the kind of sound you want. Straight down the bottom. Bottom A is straight out. Okay, let's look at this uh, difference between the octaves. It just sounds like the same horn. Exactly. So she boots up okay. So can we do a bit of Motown, a bit of... Perfect for any Motown session. Absolutely. But what about the uh, lightness? If I want to play a little bit of mulligan. Yes, now. here's the mulligan. Okay. Now I've never got that sound apart from maybe with a con crossbar but that only does that sound. So I've always needed two baritones to do that, one for rock and roll sessions and one to play jazz. So this is the first horn that I've ever had that's covered both bases. And the feel. Oh. You can play it like a tenor. Oh. 
Yes, you <laughs> Oh, yeah. Let me add it. <laughs> 